Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Aldebrand with Elastic, and today I'm going to be presenting on the combination of Ezra and OpenAI together. The title of the talk today is AI Enhanced Search Mastery, Using Azure OpenAI and Elasticsearch in Action. Again, I'm Michael Hudebrandt. I am a Distinguished Solution Architect with Elastic. And today, we're going to cover the Azure OpenAI service on your data. And what does that mean to you? And then we're going to take a hypothetical about tax season. Uh, we've just finished uh, in the United States. It's April 16th today for the recording. Um, so we've just finished tax season. So it's a very topical thing on the mind. So I'm going to give you a fun hypothetical situation on how you can use uh, the Azure OpenAI service on your data along with taxes. So what is the Azure OpenAI service on your data? What does that mean? It allows you to be able to take Elasticsearch documents and to be able to easily connect it to the Azure OpenAI service so that you can then basically start chatting with your data. It's very easy to set up. In the chat playground, you're basically going to go ahead and just add a data source. And by clicking and just providing a little bit of information, you're going to be able to rapidly connect Azure OpenAI right to your Elasticsearch data. All you need to do is choose Elasticsearch as the data source. You need to then go ahead and configure the connection, which involves basically getting the URL of the endpoint, whether if it's Elasticsearch service running in Azure or any other cloud provider of your choice, or if it's one of the Elasticsearch clusters that you're running yourself. It doesn't really matter. Any of them will work. Um, you're going to go ahead and configure security by creating an API key in the cluster and then providing access to that so that we can safely and securely access your data where it's stored in Elasticsearch. After you verify the connection, you'll be able to choose the index that you want to work with for the on your data portion of this. And then basically you're up and running. Uh, you can now start chatting with your data. And so as I mentioned, uh, you know, here April 16th, right past, uh, you know, tax time being done for everybody. You know, if, if you're already a CPA, tax season is easy. Um, you've, you've either been to school or you've been, you know, an apprentice or something, and you've memorized literally hundreds upon hundreds of pages, um, deductions and tax rules, and you keep up with it every year. So again, for CPA, doing your taxes is easy. Um, I asked Dolly here to uh, give me some images to go along with some of these prompts. This one in particular was, you know, show me someone overcome with joy in doing their own taxes. I have, uh, I have never looked like that doing my taxes. I tried maybe a couple of times over the years. Um, this is what I look like generally trying to do my taxes. I don't understand all these rules and everything. And the forms are laid out a way that I don't like and not what, not my favorite thing to do, you know. And uh, this prompt here was, you know, show me someone overcome with frustration and doing their own taxes. And I think part of it might be is, is that the screen's on the wrong side of the notebooks. So again, generative AI, not absolutely perfect in generating images, but, uh, you know, in this particular case, maybe that's part of the frustration here if you're trying to do your taxes when you can't see them. Um, and again, if you've got uh, something like a business, um, it's well beyond, you know, a simple 1040 form. You know, if it's not a W-2 and a couple of standard deductions, uh, you may be filling out things like Schedule A, B, C, D, um, all these depreciations and things like that. I, I know what those words are, but I don't know what forms they are. And, you know, I, you know it can be pretty much overwhelming and a nightmare. Um, this particular prompt is, you know, attacked by a tax form goal. And I was actually quite pleased with the way that this one came out. Um, but let's go to a hypothetical world. You know, what if, you know, here's the prompt of show me someone out having fun. Well, an AI assistant is doing their taxes for them. And I think uh, we're actually pretty close to this being a possibility. Um, the way that we can do this, and again, this is a hypothetical, is, is that, uh, you know, the IRS has a ton of documentation. It, it's all there. You know, it's public information on, you know, how do you fill out a 1040? 990, uh, the Armed Forces Tax Guide, uh, you know, this is just a screenshot because, uh, you know, the whole website is actually chock full of publications and instructions and all sorts of documents. And I don't have time to read all these things, but luckily, um, using Elastic, I was able to build a simple web crawler and basically scrape the website. And I got, you know, well over 10,000 documents of information from the IRS on, you know, report writing, uh, report generation software, all of these basically news things. Again, so I basically have all of the information that the IRS makes available to you now in a searchable index. And what we're going to do is we're going to supercharge this data. You can look through it to your heart's content and read it, but it's more you know information you have time to basically understand. Um, what we're going to be doing is turning all of this you know basically scraped web page information, all that documentation, um, we've gone ahead and indexed it into an Elasticsearch cluster. And so we're going to basically turn it into valuable nuggets of information to basically help guide us on our hypothetical. And the hypothetical scenario I have is, is that, you know, again, 
you know, a simple W-2 is not that hard to do, but, you know, what if you wanted to run a small business? And so I actually searched for, you know, strange businesses, that, you know, to basically uh, find something fun that we could use as a hypothetical today. And, you know, I've settled in here on uh, number four, which is uh, goats. Uh, you know, if you actually wanted to uh, have a herd of goats that you needed to basically maintain and you drive them to people's uh, houses or their fields, and they're basically living lawnmowers. Um, you know, it's a sustainable business model. But again, you know, if you wanted to do this, uh, you know, getting into business is, is always complex. But, you know, what could happen to you, though, tax code wise? I mean, it's not just you know, the goats. I mean, there's a lot of tax repercussions as a business of, you know, what is what does it take to run this? And, you know, what are you liable for or whatnot? So um, here's our dolly prompt of an accountant reviewing the receipts of a rent a goat landscape business owner and visualizing how they happen. So you can see we've we've got this idea of. Uh, what could be going on for all those stacks of receipts and, and what do they mean to us? And so what I'm going to show you in the demo here is, is that uh, we have basically scraped, you know, the, the IRS website. So that that's that corpus of tax stuff from the IRS. And we've loaded all, all the forms, the instructions, the publications, the bulletins, all of that stuff is now available in a searchable index. And so we're going to be asking questions of it. I'm using Azure OpenAI. And so our question and the relevant documents that we're looking for are going to get fed in as the context window. And we're going to do retrieval augmented generation of basically some really exciting tax code documentation. And we're going to have um, Azure OpenAI um, read all that stuff and help us interpret the answers. Because again, each of those documents is, you know, 20, 30 pages of really boring information. But we've got some specific questions that we want to ask. And so um, here's our chat playground. And I have configured it to work with that search IRS index, which was scraped from the IRS websites. So again, I've configured it by setting it up as a data source. And we're going to go ahead and ask some questions about, you know, what, what could happen on running a goat business. So let's start with probably an easy one. And again, for fun, you can play along and basically guess, you know, yes or no, are these things going to, going to be deductible? And so our question is, uh, can I deduct the cost of goat food for my rent to goat business on my taxes? So place your bets while we wait for uh, basically the documents to be retrieved and sent into Azure OpenAI. And it's basically doing all that hard work of, of reading the tax code for us and figuring out, yes, we can indeed deduct the cost of goat food for your rent-a-goat business on your taxes. And, you know, you can read the whole paragraph there to your, to your heart's content. But the most important thing is, is that um, I've now got where I need to go for instructions. So it's pointing me here to the 2023 instructions for Schedule F. So now I know what I need to either read in depth or, you know, basically have a discussion with a CPA on, yes, I should basically save all the receipts for that. Here's another one that should be hopefully pretty much a slam dunk for a yes or no. Hopefully everyone should guess the answer to this one, you know, is a, is a truck and trailer to transport the goats to a job site deductible on your taxes. And so once again, we're going to go ahead and search through what uh, actually amounts to about 29,000 documents that were available on the IRS website. We're finding the relevant ones using Elasticsearch and having Azure OpenAI read this very exciting tax code stuff for us. And it will tell us that, yes, the cost associated with the truck and trailer used for transporting the goats um, is deductible on your taxes. And then it's going to go ahead and point us to exactly what we need to be reading in depth in this particular citation. This is the Farmer's Tax Guide it's guiding us to for publication 225. For those that didn't know that that was the publication you needed to reference, you can thank Azure OpenAI and Elasticsearch for basically helping you do your goat taxes here. Let's get a little bit weirder. Here's a fun question. You know, can you depreciate the goat's value as an asset, even though they're livestock? So again, place your bets. Do you think it's a yes or a no? Because they're living things. Can you depreciate the value of a living thing? Well, that's for the tax code to know. And I don't know the answer, but luckily, Azure OpenAI plus Elasticsearch is able to pour through 28,000 documents for us and basically, on the order of seconds, basically help us figure out that, let's see what it says, it's thinking hard, <laughs> wait for it. The answer is yes, you can depreciate the value of goats as an asset for your rent-a-goat business. And that's because these, you know, again, livestock used for draft breeding or dairy can be depreciated as they're considered part of your business assets. So again, for those that didn't know, you can actually depreciate the value of living things. I'm waiting here for the citations to get pulled up here. Doesn't look like we got any this time. So always fun when you do this. Sometimes it doesn't behave like it did when you run through the demo. 
So here's some ideas. You know, I had some ideas on, you know, what we should ask, but like, let's kind of flip things a little bit now. Let's have a little bit more fun. Um, we're actually going to ask what I like to jokingly call GAR. You know, we've been doing rags so far, retrieval augmented generation. But now we're going to do what I call generative augmented retrieval, which is, hey, I don't know the domain space. You know, hey, what are some deductions that other livestock businesses can take? So, again, we're going to have Elasticsearch provide the answer to that query as documents. And Azure OpenAI is now going to help us by saying, you know, please provide a list of things I can copy and paste into the search box. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask for things we didn't know we needed to do. And we're going to get some answers on things that we should follow up on. And so give it a second to basically pull some things about livestock and farming and things like that. So again, you know, the power of vector search, um, being able to help us find all of those relevant documents. And after it reads it and interprets it, it's going to, again, turn hundreds of pages potentially into things that we should be following up on. So we've got the cost of livestock feed. We already answered that as our first question. Yes, that's deductible. The vehicles, again, you might be wondering where I got these things to search for. Uh, I use generative augmented retrieval to basically help me figure out this demo. Um, so we know that the expenses for the vehicle, the cost of the livestock, and you know, they're depreciated. Expenses to replacing livestock due to drought conditions. That's something I hadn't considered, for example. And you know, sales of livestock held for draft area or breeding purposes. And if you want to get deeper into it, it's pointing us here, you know, for, uh, you know, you know, farmers and ranchers hit hard by draw. There's still some other things that we could be looking for to be basically taking, you know, deductions. So again, it's helping us figure out what are expenses that we can take off on our taxes. So we can be learning things using the power of generative AI coupled with a corpus of documents that it may not have been trained on, for example. So let's have some fun now with the last few questions. Uh, here's a fun hypothetical. If you brought some goats to a uh, field and let's say somebody had abandoned some stuff in it, if you found some abandoned, you know, buried treasure, so to speak, while the goats were, you know, munching on the, the grass and all of a sudden you, you found something like maybe a sack of money or something. If you find a va abandoned valuables, tax purpose wise, do you have to pay taxes on it? So again, take your guess, figure out if you can guess correctly here and we'll see what the answer is. Give it a second to do its work here. And there is actually, believe it or not, a tax implication on finding abandoned valuables. Um, generally, if you find it and keep it, you have to be you know, basically reporting it as taxable income. So again, this could happen to you. If you had a goat business, you might find stuff in the fields that they're working on. Remember to save it and go ahead and get it appraised if you go ahead and keep it. <laughs> And the last one that we could ask is, is that, you know, is there ways that you can get extensions of tax relief? Let's say you're in an extended drought and you needed to uh, basically continue to buy a goat feed if they're not able to eat uh, basically people's lawns, uh, you know, while you're running your business, you know, will you be able to get extended, you know, drought relief and get extension? And again, a specific question, but what we're going to be asking the documents again are, hey, find me the most relevant things. Let Azure OpenAI read them for me distill it down. So instead of reading what amounts to, again, 40 to 50 pages of documentation, the answer is yes. And it's telling us exactly that, you know, we're going to get this citation again, you know, drought stricken farmers. We know that, you know, basically these are the instructions that we can read in depth. Now we know that we can go fill out form 9465 and the other citation, oh, it's still moving. There we go. The other citation here is, uh, you know, other relief for farmers in 49 states. There's another form in here that's telling you get 9465, 2448. You can take this to a CPA or read through this yourself and basically learn how to extend your tax relief. And so um, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, playing around with me for a little bit for our hypothetical, you know, goat business. Um, but you can see again how the power of basically taking all of that, you know, IRS data um, makes it a lot easier to interface with it using Azure OpenAI. I didn't have to read all that information. I was able to get the answers to my tax questions for my hypothetical goat business. And so hopefully this uh, encourages you to uh, see how easy it is to basically load data into Elastic and basically start interacting with it um, with the Azure OpenAI service on your data. And if you'd like more information, you can scan this QR code and it'll take you to a webpage that'll help you learn more. Again, thanks for joining me today.